gimbals, ibis, all that kind of stuff. Cool. My name is Andy Hornby, photographer and vlogger. 17 years ago I started teaching myself photography. Today I travel the UK as a professional wedding photographer, landscape photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, my mistakes and my tips and advice. Hi, today's video is going to be looking at vlogging and how IBIS can affect or not affect your camera. This all came about because a video I did a little while ago had me using this new camera, the Sony a6400, which doesn't have in-body image stabilisation. My argument is that IBIS doesn't really do a whole lot. So today I've got my a7 III with me. We're gonna show the difference between this camera, which is non-stabilized, and the uh, Sony a7 III, which is stabilized, has got in-body image stabilization. Uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of testing. Currently, you'll notice that the footage is very stabilized, and that's because I'm actually on my gimbal. I'm on my Zion Crane gimbal. I did a review of this not so long ago. And I don't use it that often. <coughs> I have my reasons why I don't use it which I'm going to go into in this video as well. But I wanted to start off with video on it to show you the difference. And there is a massive difference. This footage is going to look a lot better than the footage of me using uh, using the, uh, you can see it there on my kit on my shoulder. See it there on my shoulder? Joby there, which I use all the time for vlogging. I don't use this Zion Crane that often. We're going to do a little bit of testing. I've got a little bit of a runway between a load of trees down here on the estate, I'm at the Cam's Hall estate in Fairham, and I'm going to do a little bit of walking backwards and forwards. I'll do it with, with the crane first and show you what it's like, uh, both looking at me, so I'll be talking to the camera, and I'll uh, walk back this way, showing you footage from the front, as if I was doing a little bit of B-roll. Uh, and then I'm going to do it again twice with this camera on my Joby, and then with the A7 III on the Joby. See if you can see a difference between those two. I don't think it's going to be that great to be fair. Just so you know, the uh, lens I'm using is the 10 to 18 from Sony, which does actually have stabilization in it. So I don't know that IBIS is going to have much of a difference when you're vlogging and walking and talking and stuff. It's just going to be a little bit bumpy and, and it's just one of those things. If you look at any of the vloggers out there that do their kind of daily vlogs and their they're using stuff, they don't use things like the crane all the time because they're just big, they look stupid, no disrespect. I'll take a picture of it in a minute before I put it away. And uh, they're just hard to set up, so if you move anything on your camera, like if I have to take my mic off to do some B-roll, I've then got to reset it up. But I'll come to that in a minute when I take this thing off. So let's do this first test. I'm gonna walk down here. You'll see behind me, I've got a load of trees on either side, so you'll be able to see how jumpy or not jumpy this is in fact might have to change the mode on that a little bit there we go it's a little bit better uh, so I can do that and you should see that it's actually quite well stabilized and then I'm gonna spin round I'm gonna do boop, boop, boop. just gonna turn that round that way and I'm gonna actually go back so. Okay. This is me just walking, if you can hear me, hopefully. I'm literally just walking forward, holding out in front of me. And it should be fairly stabilised. I won't need to do much in post. In fact, for all of these, I won't do any stabilisation in post so you can get a good understanding of what's what. Let's see, look around that way. Spin you around there. And there you go, pretty stabilised I think. Even looking at it from the back of the camera, it looks quite stabilised. I'm not going to do any, you know, post-production stabilisation to any of this footage. So, what you see is what I've got in camera. Now I'm going to put the Zion Crane away, but before I do, let me take a picture of what this thing looks like. Uh, Let's spin you around, see what I can get. 
Turn this camera around. I think I've got a two second time on there. Yeah. There you go, took a picture. And spin you back around there so I can talk to you. So yeah, I'm gonna put the gimbal away now and get my Joby out and do like I would if I was vlogging. And like I said earlier, I don't use this often enough because when I'm vlogging, I'm usually on the go. This thing takes a little bit of time to set up. And if I do anything with the camera, like if I zoom in or if I need to put a filter on the front of it, I then have to reset the whole thing again and redo the balancing because if it's unbalanced, you wear the motor out quite quickly and the batteries will just run out really quickly as well. So that's the other thing with this as well, is battery operated. You know, I've taken this at weddings and it has lasted most of the day at weddings when I do some stuff at, at, at you know, during an event. But that's more for B-rolls, behind the scenes stuff. If I'm doing vlogging, I want to be on the go, uh, especially if I've got a camera like this that I potentially want to use off this. I mean, I can put this on a tripod. It has got a tripod thread at the bottom there. But if I want to do anything with landscape photography and like that, I want to take this off. Putting it back on to do some more vlogging, it's just time consuming, it's just, it's just bulky. This thing comes in a box that I don't want to carry around me all the time. Uh, it will fit in the bag, but because it's so such a weird shape, I'd have to take it all apart. I just don't use it because I'm lazy, <laughs> potentially. It's probably just it, I'm probably just a bit lazy. Oh, I don't know, you know, it's, it's heavy. You know, I've got a nice little camera now that I want for vlogging. I don't want to add another, another, you know, six pound or whatever this is, this thing is. It actually weighs an absolute bugger of a ton. Uh, and even now, after vlogging just for just for five minutes, you know, I've had to change arms a couple of times because it just gets so cumbersome, especially when you hold it out in front of you, and the weight is like not distributed straight up. It's just, oh, it's just, an, it's just a lot. <laughs> Let's get the Joby out, and we'll have a we'll have a quick go with that. We'll do the same test back and forwards, and we'll see what the what the difference is in. Uh, in body stabilization with these two cameras. Let's do that. So here we are, A6400. Uh, we are on the Joby now, and we're vlogging like we normally vlog if I'm talking to you. I'm walking, I'm talking. I now have my screen up, which is good, because I can see it now, because I've actually put my arm on, so the mic is now off to the side, like you saw in my last video. In that picture you saw just a minute ago on the stabilizer, I can't have that up, and I can't have the mic to the side. It wouldn't fit on, it wouldn't be wouldn't balance right. So this is a plus for me as well. This is the reason why I would use the jo the Joby over the over the stabilizer. I'm gonna spin round and move you back. Let's put that that way. And just walk normally like I would. And we're walking normally like I would. It is bouncy, but I don't think it's that bad. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm behind the mic now, obviously. But I don't think that's too bad. That's all right. Okay. Let's turn it around that way. Put that up. Okay, so I don't think that's actually that bad. I think people who are complaining are just a little bit. Uh, complaining about some new cameras finding a fault where they don't need to find a fault but I'm going to put the a7 III on now which has in body image stabilization I'll put this lens on it so it'll be the same lens and uh, we'll see if there's much of a difference I don't think it's gonna be that great to be fair but we'll have a look if it is it is if it's not it's not okay I'll see you in a minute you ready okay I'm now on the a7 III which is uh, stabilized uh, in body image, in body image stabilization, which has got IBIS, and uh, I now can't see myself because I don't have a flippy out screen on this thing, so I'm just going to walk like I would normally. Uh, hopefully, the video's fine. I can't see what I'm doing, obviously, but it'd be the same if I was on the Zion crane. If I was on this, the the gimbal I've got, I wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing because I can have the flippy screen turned up because I've got my mic on top. Uh, it's just one of them things, the mic has to go on top because it can't go on the side because of the balancing and it's just one of them things. So hopefully this is uh, this video is looking good. I'm going to spin round. You can now see what I'm doing. Let's uh, 
put it on there and I'm just walking forward hopefully it's uh, pretty good quality uh, but I don't think there's going to be a huge amount of difference in the stabilisation either with or without IBIS I don't think it's going to do a fantastic job anyway so you know even with I IBIS you know the option the option here is to is to if you need IBIS buy the A6500 but it doesn't have the doesn't have all the good benefits that the A6400 has you know the good processor the longer lasting battery because it's got a good economical processor you know it doesn't have the longer record times I just don't see the benefits of IBIS if you're vlogging you know if, if you if you need to do some really good still work IBIS is going to help you out but you know if you're vlogging and you're going to walk around and you're going to use a Joby it's going to be bouncy unfortunately people it's just one of them things I don't know what to tell you it's just gonna happen uh, I'm gonna switch you back now to the a6400 and we'll do a little bit of an outro so I'll see you there cheers Okay, so you can probably tell that I'm not a massive fan of using the gimbal. You're back on it now, by the way, you lucky people. Because a few reasons, it's bulky, it's heavy. I can't see my flip out screen that I've now got on my A6400. And that's why I bought it. Why wouldn't I use it? So, you know, it's nice to have stabilized vlog footage, but it's not always gonna be handy or helpful or easy to do when you're out in the field and you potentially got one camera set up, so I want to use this for B-roll as well as other bits and pieces. I don't know, it's nice to have, but with the mic on top, I can't use it to its full capability, so I've got to take the mic off, which makes it unbalanced again, which means I have to rebalance it. That's a lot of work. It is a lot of work. Nice to have. I just don't see me using it a lot in vlogs, so when I'm vlogging, boys and girls, you have to expect to see a little bit of bumpy footage just is what it is look at all the people who do vlogs and you'll see it's just not practical to use a gimbal like this and they're expensive the Joby's what 40 quid this thing's over 350 nice to have nice to use especially at events so I can get some nice smooth footage but not always practical for for vlogging with I'm afraid uh, you just have to not not expect it too much look how gorgeous this place is I come down here the other morning and they'd forgotten to turn the lights off and this thing gets lit up at night but generally in the mornings those lights aren't on so blue hour the other morning I came down here and got a really nice shot that's this shot just here now I want to explain to you about this shot because it actually reverts back to the video I did last Friday uh, if you haven't seen that one go have a look it refers to the one and only camera you actually need for uh, for landscape photography, and that's your phone. And that picture you just saw was taken on this the other morning, because uh, I've got an office just around the corner from here, and when you drive onto the estate, you can see the, the, the building. The lights aren't usually on in the morning, so I saw it and I thought, oh, it's been raining all night. Get some nice reflections. I've seen this picture been done from a slightly different angle before from a, a local photographer Sue Woodbridge her photography is awesome by the way uh, I'll leave a link to Sue just there so you can find Sue's work on Instagram and uh, she's taken a picture of this a few times so I thought you know conditions are right uh, the skies the sky was pretty awesome pretty dramatic and just getting a reflection in a puddle just made for a really really great shot and I come down and took it with my phone uh, nearly got the phone wet in the puddle that you see uh, but it was worth it it worked out right and reverting this back to the video I did last week on the only camera you need I actually put out a little bit of a competition on that that video to see if anyone could tell uh, which picture or which pictures 
were actually taken from my phone out of the, I think there was 14 I put up. I'm gonna scroll them for you now as well so you'll see them as I talk. And uh, I just wanted to let you know that in fact, all of those 14 pictures were taken with my phone. They've done a lot better on my social media than most of my pictures have with my A7 III, the A6400 got here and the A7R2 that I've taken over the past couple of years. Uh, I just wanted to reiterate that it's not always about the gear you've got. It's about seeing something, being in the moment, seeing that composition and getting it with whatever kit you've got to hand and generally it's going to be a mobile phone. People are always commenting on my pictures saying that I wish I had thousands of pounds for the kit that you've got so I can get pictures like you've just taken. And in fact, it doesn't take really expensive kit to get some of these pictures. It just takes having an eye for a composition sometimes and uh, being in the right place at the right time. You can wreck your shoot and then get everything right, the tide right, the weather right. Uh, and you get down there and you might not get a decent picture, but you might just be in the right place at the right time at some point, see an image in your mind and think, will that work? Get your camera out on your phone, have a look. So it's just a quick end into this video. I just wanted to say, yeah, if you look back through my Instagram uh, over the last, sorry, this thing's getting heavy, changing hands. Uh, over the last sort of six weeks, seven weeks, the pictures you see on my Instagram that don't have my watermark on them, actually they're taken from my phone. So go back, have a look. You know, even the ones taken of the Spinnaker Tower in the fog, that picture done awesome on my social media. It's got over 400 likes on Instagram, which for me is actually really good, I like it. I took that picture while I was taking a time-lapse on this thing, I took that with my phone. They're all edited via Lightroom Mobile. Uh, not a lot of work done to them, to be honest, because, you know, they're JPEGs out of the camera. Uh, but yeah, turned out right in the end. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please slap, slap a thumbs up on this video. Uh, comment if you've got any questions. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you get updates every time I upload a new video. And yeah, gimbals, ibis, all that kind of stuff. Cool. I'll see you soon. Keep shooting. Bye. Still here, nice. It's good that you're still here because I want to tell you a little something. Those people who are avid followers of me, I want to give a little something back. And to do that, it means working alongside you online because a lot of you can't make it to my workshop. So I've just set up a Patreon account. It is patreon.com forward slash Andy Hornby Photos. So Patreon is a platform where we can create stuff together, even if you're halfway across the, the globe. And I can learn and teach alongside you, literally alongside you. There's so many things I could do to help you get your photography just to that next level. It is awesome. If you can make it to one of my workshops, I've got a website. Go to ahphotographyworkshops.uk and have a look, see what I've got going on. But if you can't make it to one of my workshops, Patreon is a really good platform where we can create stuff together and we can take your photography to another level. So if you like what I'm doing and you want me to learn alongside yourself, see you there. Take it easy, have a good day. Bye.